Now we'll take a look at the science section. The science on this test is not really computational or theoretical science. It's more interpreting charts and graphs and data and evaluating experiments. The format of the test, they're going to be data representation questions. This is where you are going to be required to interpret and analyze charts, tables, diagrams. There will be research summaries to evaluate and that's just what you have to do. You have to evaluate and understand one or more related experiments or studies. They'll be on the same subject but they may be different interpretations of it. And there'll be conflicting viewpoints. This is where you analyze and compare alternative theories. But you're going to do all of this within the framework of experiments or studies or represented data. If you see graphs or bar charts like this one, remember that you must pay strict attention to each axis and see what's being interpreted or represented in the chart in the graph. Like we said, it may be a graph and we want to see what's being compared on each of the axes and we want to see what's being represented in the graph. You can see here we're measuring the atmospheric carbon dioxide concentration over time. That's what's on each of these axes and you'll see that it's also taking into account the long-term trend versus the monthly mean since there's a great deal of fluctuation in the monthly mean. Now they may be representing something. There may be a diagram or a portrayal of something that you're going to have to interpret or it's going to be something that they are going to be doing something to or with. When you see something like this, notice where you have connections. Notice what these different things represent. Also note where you have things that are lacking. As you can see, there are a great many corresponding representations. You have the radius represented as R, you have the subcosta represented as SC. We also see that there are some that we don't have, the M1, the M2, the M3. These will have to be explained in some part of the passage or you're going to make conjecture on what these may or may not be. There may be a diagram that you're going to have to interpret. You may have to interpret what effect the control grids having here the entrance or what effect the electron beam what causes it to go down but again there will also be a body paragraph to go with this there may be questions where you have to interpret something from a chart in this case the change in temperature versus the heat released for the change in temperature and you'll see the difference between a ham and tomato you have to make comparisons between the two and then generalizations. In this case you generalize that the heat released is always larger than the change in temperature. You may also be asked to compare different things. In this case they show that a stimulus is given, there's a drop in membrane potential, then a sudden rise, a peaking, and then another drop that takes it below the baseline. Now we're going to compare this one to another type of membrane in the next one. In this one you'll see the stimulus is given but there's a delay before there's any kind of increase and then there's a slight increase, gradual one, and when it comes back down it remains on the baseline. So you'd be asked to project or compare the two different responses to the stimulus. Again it may or may not be addressed in a passage or there may be a numbers accompanying it in a chart or a graph. One thing that's going to be crucial for you to understand, and it's not usually presented in a lot of science classes, is the principles of variables. Variables are the elements of an experiment. Let's say we've got a fan. We want to know if the fan turns faster if you increase the voltage. Let's think about how we'd set this up. Well, you'd change the voltage, wouldn't you, for the fan, then you measure how fast it turns. Okay, the independent variable 
is the different amount of voltage we apply. We control that, but it's independent. We're m making that an element of the experiment that's going to produce something else. What it produces is the dependent variable. This is the number of revolutions the fan blade makes, how fast it goes, in response to the independent variable, which was the amount of voltage we apply. And to make sure the only thing we're measuring is the response to different amounts of voltage, we have to control the variable of the type of motor. So we'd use the same motor for each test. That way we isolate the single thing we're trying to measure. Understanding the use of variables is key to understanding the scientific method, and it's the key to interpreting experiments, and it's the key to looking at and evaluating experiments, which is what really you're doing in the science passages.